Hi everybody, it's Claire back with another art journal video and in this one again I'm playing with Dina's new release and I'm creating a mini book using the transparencies as pages. So I'm taking some of the sheets from the Pattern Play Pack 2 um, from Dina's new release and I am basically cutting one of the sheets into three pieces. So let me just quickly me measure sorry about all that noise oops let me just quickly measure for you so roughly they are about three and a half centimeter um, three and a half inches deep so i've cut them into three then i'm using my bone folder just to help uh, put a crease in the center of each of those those are going to be my pages and then i was thinking okay what am i going to do for a cover and i often use up leftover paint on tags I'll just kind of smoosh it across particularly if I'm, I've done like a rainbow page where I've added a rainbow swoosh across the middle of my page don't know what else to call it um, and I will use any leftover paint on my brush up on a tag I found one of the large Dina tags and this just fitted absolutely perfectly it's like it was made for this um, so using a braddle I've just punched three holes through um the center of the spine and then i'm just using some waxed cotton thread i'm going out through the middle up through one of the holes right across the spine um back out to the outside and back in through the center hole and then just fastening off in the middle of my book it's a really simple way to fasten a book together um and this achieves what i want really which is just to fasten the cover on and fix the pages together so then I'm just grabbing um, three of my favourite stamp sets. So I've grabbed one called Make Things Happen, Seeing is Believing and Squared. Now here I've got a large sheet of mixed media paper and I've sped this right up and I am just stamping out loads of images here. So once I've stamped them out using my archival ink, I am then going to spend ages fussy cutting. I hate fussy cutting, as you know. Oh, it's just... It's so tedious. I really don't enjoy it at all. Um, I know there's lots of you out there that do. I kind of, I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> I really don't get it. Yeah. So I'm just stamping out lots and lots of these images. And um, here I was just jotting down which ones I'd used. And just making sure that I've got plenty of things to play with. So the reason I've done them on the white is because I kind of thought I could more easily add a colour to them if I wanted to. Um, and given they were going on to the transparency pages, I thought they would work quite well. So one thing I will say about making this little book with the transparency pages is you can pretty much treat them like paper once you've added the acrylic paint on. So I'm using the blending tool and I'm doing a kind of a, a dabbing motion, like a pouncing motion with the tool just to get that paint on there. And if you do one layer, let it dry or give it a very gentle dry with a heat tool on a quite a low setting, you can then layer the paint up and you can go back in and add another uh, coat of paint. So you notice here I'm just going back in and I am layering paint over the top. So it is just very much like working on a normal page. Here I've uh, chopped a bit off one of these images and I'm just sticking it on the side of my page. And then what I decided to do was when I flipped the page over, I was going to pull that colour that I could see through across onto the left hand page of the new page. And then I was going to bring a new colour across to the right hand side. So you can see here I've got turquoise on the left and pink on the right and then kind of blend them a little bit in the middle. Um, this is a lovely, a lovely way to blend those colours just using that blending tool they really do kind of smoosh together really nicely I'm using Dina's ultra thick gel medium to stick my images into my book they did take a little bit of a while to dry but they are all fixed in quite well so then I'm just working my way through and I'm just decorating each page using some of the images that I stamped and cut out um, having to give them a bit of a hand to stick in place uh, to decorate my pages really and just kind of working through as I would if it was a normal journal. I'm using some of the typed ledger papers for quotes on my pages too and um, sticking those in place with some of my clear glue. Look at that and not only 
does it look like a normal journal page but you've got the interest of the transparency um, underneath where it peeps through and the bits that you can see because I haven't added the paint over the whole of the page. So here I'm just adding some colour onto some of these images. I'm using the scribble sticks um, a bit like a watercolour paint really. Um, just kind of rubbing my brush onto the end of the pigment, picking some pigment up and then painting it on. It's a really quick way to get colour on without, I couldn't be bothered to get my watercolour paints out. Um, so yeah, there's a really easy way to do it. So then I'm just adding some colour onto the hair, onto the rest of the uh, figure. And this is pretty much how I work my way through this little mini transparency book, just working through each page using the images that I've stamped and cut out to just uh, fill those pages with lovely things. I'm using a Stibolo all you'll notice even that uh, writes on the acrylic paint as well. So once you've got that paint layer on and it's nice and dry, you can then pretty much work on it as you would if it was in your journal. I think the only thing I have found doesn't work spectacularly well is if you try and write on it with a Signo Uniball, it will lift the paint and it will kind of scratch through. But even that's not a problem because you could create some fun pages with fun marks on by scratching into the paint. Um, so here you notice I'm pulling the pink through that you can see from the other reverse side. I'm pulling it through onto that left hand side and then introducing a new colour on the right hand side and um, just pulling that across. I also added a bit of neon pink over the top just to brighten that pink as well. Um, it's funny, I've just um, you'll notice I've got a um, piece of mixed media paper on my glass mat. This is from when I did my uh, Art Journal Lovers live the other night. And this is starting to become a really fascinating under paper. It's got so many lovely colours on and I'm starting to doodle on it as well. Um, I'm thinking I might start to use an under paper a bit more and build up a collection of under paper sheets with different uh, blobs of colour and patterns and marks on which would make great collage fodder. So here I am again sticking some uh, stamped elements onto my page. I've done some stenciling, I've used the lattice stencil, added some paint splatters um, and then here I just use a bit of washi tape. Uh, this is from Unwow Studio just to stick these, help these pieces stick in a little bit better and also just introducing a bit more pattern as well to the page. And then I'm adding my quote in as well. And then working on the next page. So here you can see pulling the orange through and then I'm going to blend another colour through on the right hand side so that that overlaps. I'm using a really nice yellow. So I started off with Dina's uh, lemon and then used an um, Amsterdam acrylic yellow, which is a bit more of a golden yellow over the top. Um, to brighten that too. This is one of the coaster stencils from Dina's last release and I'm using apricot through that. There's a bit of a compliment, it's like a nice pastel but it's not white so it works really well over the top of those lovely warm colours. Um, so just introducing a little bit of more pattern over the top of those, uh, the orange and the yellow that's on the transparency pages. And then here I've used one of the squared faces and I'm going to um, give it some hair that extends out across the page. So I did map it in in pen first before I grabbed my paintbrush and started to paint it in. Um, it just shows you can think outside the box. That's quite funny given this is a squared stamp. Um, you can think outside the box with these stamps as well. You don't have to use them just as they are. You can um, change them up and alter them and make them your own. Um, so just because a stamp has no hair on it, a face has no hair, um, you can add your own hair. You can 
you know, there's ways around this things. Just sort of sometimes mix it up, think outside the box a little bit. So she's now got some hair. And once that was dry, I then went in with a white Posca pen and just added some marks on to just kind of represent the movement of the hair. Um, but I did need to make sure that the black acrylic paint was properly dry. So once I'd done that, I just added some white splatters onto there as well, just to soften that black. Um, and, and just because I like splatters. And then using my Posca pen, I am just writing some words on the bottom of the page. So you can see pretty much I'm just treating them as I would do if they were normal pages. When I say normal pages, I mean from paper and not transparency. Um, but I do love that kind of reflective quality that they've got, the way they're catching the light. It just adds a really interesting element to the page. So here I am pulling the yellow through onto the next page. And then going into green. So I'm kind of, kind of working through the rainbow. Although that does go a bit pear shaped on the next one. Too much paint came out there. It's always the way. Either nothing, all or nothing. There's like you're squeezing it so hard and nothing's and then all of a sudden all the paints come out. Oh dear. And then I've just chopped one of the stamped images in half. And I'm going to staple those in place. And then just giving them a little bit of colour to their hair as well. And a little bit of colour on their cheeks. And then I drew some lines so that I could um, do some more writing. This was just to act as a bit of a guide really. only just fit didn't it and then this is the last set of pages that I do I don't do anything on the very back page so the green and then this is where the rainbow goes a bit pear shaped because I decided I wanted to use purple just had to be a little bit of bit a little bit careful sorry where the two meet in the middle because I didn't really want to make a muddy brown color so I didn't really spend a lot of time trying to blend these two colours here, um, but I still think it worked. I just overlapped it a little bit and then let it be. So sticking in a, another face. And I have used most of my images that I stamped and cut out. So here I'm just cutting up these little um, stamped images where there's three of these lovely circles with a bit of text in, chopping them up and I'm going to spread them around on this page I've put a bit of washi tape down just to make some lines on the page as well and then I am going to just be sticking in a typed ledger paper quote um, just to complete that page I do love this Posca pen I think it's one of my favorites might have to start collecting other colors in the chunky pens and then I'm just sticking my quote in like that. So then I'm onto my cover. I've just popped a, th a couple of pieces of sari ribbon through the, the holes on the tag. Um, and that's how I'm going to fasten my little book. Because it does have a tendency to spring open because the transparency pages are quite um, uh, reluctant to close. <laughs> so here I'm just going in with some... I think it's permanent red violet light from Amsterdam acrylic and one of the coaster stencils just added a little bit of stenciling over the top of that lovely rainbow and then I am just adding some of these elements on the front cover too I do quite often go through to the back of where I've stapled and just push them flat so that I don't catch myself on them although to be honest the Tim Holtz tiny attacher is rather fabulous and doesn't tend to leave them sticking up. So here's a little flip through of the mini book. 
This was lots of fun to do. Um, if you haven't made a little book using the transparency as pages, give it a try. I think you will really like it. Um, and adding the stamped elements on as well, it just kind of makes them even more sturdy. So it's a really fun way to create a little mini book, a little bit different too. I'm loving how the colours flow as well. It's really nice. OK, so I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this little mini uh, book using the transparencies for pages. Um, uh, yeah, and found it inspiring. Um, come back again tomorrow for another video where I will share my creations with Dina's new release. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.